Hi, I'm Fred Long. I'd like to welcome you to Greek Matters. In this installment, we're going to be looking at Ephesians 5, verses 15 to 21, which I would call Wise Living in the Spirit. Now, the text before you here is the Net translation. It's a nice translation. It provides lots of good, helpful footnotes and discussions. And I could have chosen really any translation. Below I have the Nestle Alon 28th edition without the text critical apparatus. And I have a color coding schema overlaid on the Greek text. And green are conjunctions. Non-indicative verbs are red. That is command forms participles in this passage. Adverbs are blue. Pronouns are orange. And prepositions are purple. Well, I'm going to look at this passage because it's an important one. There's a transition taking place here. The un indicates uh, progression, development in the argument, as well as a, an inference is being drawn. Then you have the command form, blepete, which means to see, which is being uh, translated as be very careful. So really it means be looking at or watch carefully. And that's what this adverb means, akrobos, means carefully. Now the content of what we're supposed to be watching is this in this next clause. It's an indirect question. Post peripetite, how you are walking, literally. Now this is a, uh, a metaphor. It means to live. So watch carefully how you're living, and then particularly not as unwise, but as wise. Here you can see that unwise and wise are cognates. The unwise has an alpha privative, which negates the meaning of it. Uh, and we have a special um, may Allah construction, not this, but this. Often we see this with ook, <clears throat> but here we have the conjunction may, or the adverb may. So not as unwise, but as wise. So. Paul is really stressing the butness of this walk as wise people. Now, verse 16 is a participle, and we have to decide what it's modifying. Is it watch carefully, or is it modifying uh, living? I'm going to take it with living, but there is some question about that. And so, this participle clause is going to be elaborating what it looks like to walk wisely. What it looks like to walk wisely. So this is a, a circumstantial or adverbial participle. And its function, though, is to expand and elaborate on this idea of living, how you're going to live. And the net translation says, taking advantage of every opportunity. That's an okay translation. The word every is not here. And literally, this word means to purchase or buy up, possibly to redeem. So its root, agora, has to do with the market. Uh, there is another verb that could have been chosen without this X on the front. This is a preposition which probably intensifies the action of buying. So it really means to buy up. And so uh, perhaps that's where the idea of every is coming from in their translation, but literally purchasing the time or the opportunity. So this is what it means to be wise. And here, time and opportunity is, is seen as a commodity. And we use that same metaphor today, that time is precious. And the reason why we need to buy up the opportunity, Paul explains, is because, in this next clause, because the days are evil. There are evil times. And perhaps he's you know, if we're talking about time, perhaps we need to understand that the daylight or days, like the time span of days, are generally evil. There's just a lot of temptation, pressures, and other things, distractions that would cause us to not buy up opportunities, but to waste them. Well, in verse 17, there's a conjunction functioning prepositional phrase. Okay, so this is a prepositional phrase on account of this that essentially functions like a conjunction. Now, what is the this referring to? Because of this, is it because the days are evil? Or is it um, 
because of this need to watch carefully. Well, it's neuter, and it probably refers to all the above. So for this reason, because of this need to watch carefully, because the days are evil, and to redeem the time, therefore, on account of this reason, don't be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay, so here we have that may Allah construction again. And what this does is it really offsets this but. The but is really in focus here. Understand what the will of the Lord is. Now, we can understand the Lord's will in different ways. In the holiness tradition, we would understand it in terms of moral purity and holiness. Uh, we could also see it in terms of, like, my calling in life. What am I supposed to do? But in the context of Ephesians... Uh, it means outreach, evangelism, understanding what the Lord's will is. That is, that God is working to redeem people, bring people together, to save them and include them into his people, into the body of Christ. So this is the Lord's will. And attached with this but, uh, in other words, part of what they're supposed to be, rather than being foolish, what they're supposed to be then is seen in verse 18. And do not be getting drunk with wine in which there is debauchery. So we're looking at that part of the verse right here in verse 18. Now, interestingly, all these commands are present tense. And that would suggest kind of an ongoingness or, or actions that are, are needing to be repeated and habitual. So don't be being drunk with wine in which there's dissipation. Now, this is an elaborative relative pronoun clause, and it's translated often as debauchery. But this, ver this word here is from sozo, ultimately. Sozo, which means to save. And when you look up its meaning, it really means wastefulness. So getting drunk with wine causes wastefulness, wasting probably of time if we're going to be in the realm of days and opportunities Perhaps we need to understand the wastefulness associated with being drunk with wine as just like wasting time, wasting energy, wasting resources. And when we think about wine drinking in antiquity, I mean, Paul doesn't say don't get drunk with bourbon. Uh, he doesn't say don't get drunk with, uh, you know, vodka. Well, of course, those drinks weren't available. But I think we need to understand that wine drinking was a major form of festivity, a major form of entertainment. And this allows us to think about ap applying this passage today because what are our entertainments? What do we like to do? How do we invest gobs and gobs of time in doing? Well, those things are a waste of time. They may not be debauchery in a sense of how we might understand that term, but they certainly are uh, wasting of time and resources and energy. In contrast to this don't, we have another may a la construction. So this is the third one, and this is Paul's way of stressing the, the but. So rather than doing this, we need to instead do this. And here then we have a description, uh, a really important command to be filled with the, the Spirit. And again, this is present tense. This is something we're supposed to be repeatedly doing and involved with. It's, it's interesting that it's a passive voice verb form. Now, it's kind of hard to command someone to be passive. But here, I think it makes sense in terms of us needing to be receptive to what the Spirit is wanting to do in our lives. And so this is something we need to practice, how to listen, how to obey, and allow the Spirit to influence us, to guide us in our living, to pay attention when we're chided, uh, when our conscience alerts us to something, or positively when the Spirit might guide us to call people or to stop and say hello to a stranger or engage people in conversations. It's many times in my life when I've paid attention to these little nudgings, it's usually been for a good purpose. And of course, there's probably lots of times when I, I'm not even aware of how an act of kindness or an encouraging word might have really helped someone in that moment in their life. Now, this raises a question of what does it look like to be filled with the Spirit? Well, in the following few verses here, you see these red words here. These are participles. 
And what I'm going to do is just isolate this be filled to spirit. And I'm just going to start to align all these participles. These are post-nuclear uh, participles that elaborate and tell us more about what it looks like to be filled with the spirit. So what's entailed? What, what, what happens when we're filled with the spirit? And you see that there's a nice listing of participles. You have five of them, in fact. And they all seem to be hanging off of this verb to be filled. Now, two of them are really closely related, singing and making psalms in your heart to the Lord. The first one is speaking to yourselves. This uh, reflexive pronoun is rather interesting because it would suggest some, this is something that we do to ourselves. In fact, I might suggest that there is self-reflective activity right here. That this reflexive pronoun, is, this is something that we do for our own benefit. And what's really interesting is that the prepositional phrase here in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, these different words for psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs represent three different cultural um, words. Psalm would be uh, Jewish, hymns would be Greek, and odes would be Roman. So it's really interesting that Paul is deliberately using three different kinds of words that are overlapping that reflect three different cultural uh, perspectives of his, probably of his audiences. We're supposed to be singing and psalming in our hearts to the Lord and um, giving thanks always on behalf of everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God the Father and submitting to one another. So really there's an interesting movement from inward kind of reflection perhaps on scripture. These psalms by the way may be like the early Christian canon like the Old Testament particularly the psalms was very valuable to them. So this might be self-speech in terms of, of, of being affirmed and, and built up by scripture. So moving from this kind of inward activity to singing, which is more corporate, giving thanks always, and then finally submitting to one another. And here we have a reflexive pronoun, which, in, which, which stresses mutuality and reverence for Christ. So being filled with the Spirit results in, or can be explained in, in these participles, these things which are described right here. And um, <clears throat> how significant it is that Paul will then move on in the next verse to talk about wives in relation to their husbands. Unfortunately, the uh, many Greek translations as well as English translations will separate verse 21. Sometimes they'll even put a heading to, to separate it from the, this call to be filled with the Spirit. But in fact, submitting to one another is an outcome outcome of being filled with the spirit and and then paul moves to talk about husband and wife and there's supposed to be mutual submission in that relationship as well particularly husbands loving their wives offering their bodies to them and and wives respecting their husbands well i just wanted to walk through this passage and i hope you found it helpful if you have any suggestions please email me at frederick.long at asburyseminary.edu. Hope to see you next time. Thanks.